We've all heard stories of how bad owners can be in their mismanagement of a football club, but I don't think you've heard this story yet. In 1998, Chester City Football Club was nearly 1 million pounds deep in debt, which could have easily seen the club fold at any point. But have no fear, Chester faithful. Your savior has arrived. American-born Terry Smith. Prior to the acquisition of Chester City, Terry made history in the world of Britball, British American football. He's the only coach to have ever won both the Euro Bowl with the Manchester Spartans and the Euro Nations Championship with the Great Britain National American football team. Because of these successes, he was actually part owner of the Spartans and multiple other sports teams. Terry decided he wanted to own a football club next, so he picked Chester because it was close to Manchester and he liked the city zoo. He also added that he liked the walls, as do a a lot of Americans. Terry had no experience in running a football club, but Chester City, with arms wide open, gave him the chance, making him the first ever American to run an English club. His goal? Drive the club from the fourth tier to the second within three seasons. It was thanks to him that Chester City's debts were dealt with in just six months as well. But Terry was unlike any owner you'd ever seen. Terry Smith was trying to be the main character of a shitty American sports trope movie, and nothing would get in his way to prevent it from happening. To Terry, Chester was the underdog team he would put on his back and carry to glory from the bottom. He would face the troubling challenges and defeat them almost instantly through hard work in the American dream. His players were to raise him in the air as fans chanted his name in a lovely harmony. For Terry was to be recognized as one of the greatest men to ever live. Nice and lively, nice and lively. Last man is Danny Carson. Five, ten press-ups, Dan. Multiples of six were going on. Twelve. <laughs> yes, ten press-ups. Working their mathematics, huh, Joe? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. While Terry was having his god complex come into shape, Kevin Ratcliffe, manager of Chester City at the time, started realizing the club had gone from one crisis to a new one. While the financial takeover was being processed, Ratcliffe was trying to help negotiate players' contracts before their first match against Barnett. Ratcliffe claimed that even though Smith said his hands were tied and couldn't do anything about contracts, he was still giving orders to many at the club. Ratcliffe was furious, and rightly so. He was fighting for players who had no idea whether they were going to be able to pay rent or not. This was an owner playing with the livelihoods of players, and just the thought of that is terrifying. All the while, Terry would invite trialists to preseason training that Ratcliffe would have to deal with. You'd turn up each morning and a lad you'd never seen, let alone heard of before, was standing there without a pair of boots, said Ratcliffe. According to Ratcliffe, a dude could say he played for the Manchester United U-12s and Terry would be so excited and sign the guy without confirming the claims because he had no connections to do so. Along with the influx of randoms from your local Tesco came in Smith's own signings. The philosophy of Smith's transfers? Well, listen for yourself. My philosophy is you just work hard. You, you take the players you have, and sure, you add to it some, but you know, you work and you work, and in the end, you're going to get there. Smith signed Trinidadian Angus Eve and Serbian Goran Milosavljevic, who were deemed technically capable by multiple teammates. Then you had the iconic Smith signings of Martin Nash, brother of two-time NBA MVP Steve Nash. Quick a Jets, who signed a two-year contract and never made a single appearance for the club. Kimu Laird, another Trinidadian who made just three appearances for the club. And finally, New Yorker Joe Carver who only made just two appearances for Chester City. What I'm going to assume is that Smith had his god complex take over and said that anyone he deemed not good enough, he would make good enough through his work and you work and in the end you'll get there philosophy. Because almost every signing he made according to several players were far away from being good enough at that level. It wasn't until Friday before the first match when contract negotiations for the already existing players at the club would start. Players could not train properly because they were too busy negotiating their new contracts and Chester Chester lost 2-0 to Barnett that weekend. Just four matches into the new season, and Kevin Ratcliffe resigned. He had had enough of Terry. Ratcliffe knew Terry was conspiring against him, so that way Terry could take all the glory. Following the resignation of Ratcliffe was the appointment of a new manager. Terry Smith himself. According to the man who had absolutely no experience in managing a football club, all coaching is 90% the same regardless of the sport. Terry was about to show everyone the mastermind within him. Just a city was to change forever. His skills on the touchline were unmatched. That's to the Drive him 
Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. No! No! His tactics were like you had just heard every single footballing genius's words meshed together. You gotta get three goals first half. Getting after him. First half, three goals. Listen, man, their, their whole attack is designed to pull our fullbacks out and then get the ball in the hole. They're doing it two ways. They're going long kicks, and then if you go up and fight for that header with him, he's just flicking it into the hole, and then we're getting in the hole. The other way, just, he's just trying to flick it in the hole. That's, their, that's what all they're trying to do there. You just sit back and let him flick it, and you get it. The fans wish that he were their adopted father. Besides working hard and getting there, Smith had other ways of approaching the beautiful game. This included 20-page documents on league opponents that players barely understood. He also implemented a new captain system, one for the defense, midfield, and attack. It obviously didn't work, but what I find funny is there's a video interviewing the three captains asking what they think of the system. When answered by Ross Davidson, he looks so unconvinced because he himself doesn't even know what the f*** is happening. The multiple captain system is similar to what American football does, where the offense has a captain and so does the defense. But you see, here's the difference. There's still just one captain on the field at a time. He based all of his tactics off of statistics, and if you know even a lick of football, that's not how it works. Go away! Players would go onto the pitch before every match and not even know what the tactics were. Topped out with a pre-match diet of pizza and cookies and you got yourself a recipe for a bad evening ahead. I know from experience that you shouldn't do that because once I had Buffalo Wild Wings before playing footy with some friends and uh... <sighs> I'm never doing that again. Results were awful and fans demanded change. A supporters group would come to the decision of even boycotting games. And here's what Tactical Terry had to say about the doubt from the supporters. The supporters don't really know what I'm doing on the coaching side. They don't know what the team is doing. They're making assumptions based upon a complete um, lack of knowledge of what's going on. The players are the ones that have the knowledge. That is what is really the most meaningful thing. The traditional thought is anyway that Americans don't know much about English football. I think that I'm like an easy target for anyone. In reality, it may not have seemed to be 90% the same regardless of the sport because in 25 league matches, Chester under new tactical mastermind Terry Smith earned just 16 points. Finally, after an embarrassing 5-1 loss to bottom club Leighton Orient at home, Terry Smith finally sacked himself before the new year. What Chester City's players and supporters had just witnessed was the real life version of Ted Lasso. Football is football no matter where you play it. You got grass, you got cleats, and you got helmets with masks on them. Smith appointed Ian Atkins as the new manager for City. Chester were bottom of the table, which made it difficult to buy players that were willing to risk their own futures for the club. But somehow, in just three weeks, Atkins Atkins signed nine new players. Although Terry was not in charge, he still wanted Atkins to approach the game like Smith did, like a protege in a way. But luckily for Ian, the results improved and there was no need for such bonehead strategies. Following a 7-1 drubbing from Brighton, Chester had their best stretch of results of the season. A win against Exeter City, two draws followed up, a loss against Southend United, but then a draw followed up by two wins that included a 5-0 demolition of Mansfield Town. And even when the results were looking great for Chester and their survival chances grew thicker, Terry Smith still wasn't impressed. After a 2-1 win away from home at Leighton Orient, Terry Smith said the team played better under his management than Atkins' side, which if you remember, Terry Smith lost 5-1. Because his side retained more of the possession. And I'm proud to be an American. The great escape went to the final day of the season after an unlucky 1-0 loss against Cheltenham Town. So it all came down to Peterborough at home. Chester needed a win in order to maintain their 69-year-long Football League status. Unfortunately, that day just wasn't theirs. A 64th minute goal from Peterborough would seal the fate of Chester City. Their Football League status had come to a disheartening end. After the match, Terry made a grand statement. It was powerful and showed the optimism that we as a club shall prevail. He said Atkins should shoulder much of the blame. And to say the least, I don't think Atkins was very happy about that statement. The fans have been conned. The reason the club now finds itself in the conference is down to one man, and that is the owner. The harsh truth is that he never liked the fact that the supporters took to me. 
he wanted to be the great hero. Terry Smith should take a long, hard look at himself this morning. The words he came out with at the weekend really hurt me. They cut deep. There was no need at all for him to say what he did, and more to the point, there was no substance at all to any of the allegations. Atkins left the club soon after which left Chester City's future in even more question. For the next season in the conference, Smith hired former Chester City coach Graham Barrow. This would be a way to at least win the fans over and give them some kind of hope. Smith would actually let Barrow do his thing, and because of it, Chester City were sitting in a decent fourth place at mid-season. So maybe Terry finally learned. No, he didn't. During a cup match against Blackburn Rovers managed by Pogba Stan Graham Souness, Chester City played a great match having had a goal disallowed before Blackburn finally found the breakthrough with just 20 minutes remaining, and in the end won 2-0. Chester had so much fight and on a different day it could have been them as victors. But Terry Smith thought otherwise. The tactical scuff to Jerry Seinfeld was repulsed by the appalling performance. He stormed into the dressing room and told all the players how disappointed he was. Needless to say, after the incident, the already bad relationship between Smith and Barrow would get far worse. Sooner than later, Barrow would get a call from someone that he had been sacked. Chester finished 8th in the conference and even won the conference cup at the end of the season thanks to Barrow's tenure. Into that summer and fall, there would be less of a presence of Terry Smith. He sold City to Stephen Vaughn, who uh, also wasn't a great owner, and the short-lived Smith era had finally come to an end. Chester City dissolved years later after terrible financial problems under Vaughn and then would become simply Chester City in 2010. They currently play in National League North. You could argue Terry Smith wanted best for the club, seeing how he removed their debts and interacted with the Chester community. But I think Terry just wanted best for Terry. You, know, you can live your life and you can let it, you know, and at the end of the time when you're 70 or 80 or whatever and look back on it and think, you know, what did I, what did I do? And I think really you'll, Anybody in their life will look back and see maybe five or six moments in their life that sort of, you know, gave the outline to what their life really was about. And I think that uh, an opportunity to, to help to save a club that's 114 years old and is such a part of the city is something that you could really be proud of if you were able to accomplish that. And I think that was really the, the overriding uh, influence and, and desire among everything else. When I listen to what he says and think about all the damage he did because he wanted to be praised as a god by the Chester faithful, the interview just comes off very disingenuous. He gives this idea that he wants to help a club that means so much to a city, but in reality, it's more of him just wanting to help his image. If the club looks good, he looks good. End of. It's unknown as to where Terry Smith is now and what he's currently doing, but one thing will always be known. The man was always in his own bizarre world. But what do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments down below. This was a really, really fun story to research about, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video just as much as I did making it. I'm gonna have to delete a good amount of my files because there's just endless amounts of Terry Smith now on my computer, and it makes me feel very uncomfortable. I think I'll set the like goal to 150 because we keep smashing 100 within like two or three hours. Be sure to follow my Twitter, where it's basically just me dumping my mind onto an online social media platform. Be sure to follow my Twitch where I stream once a week and sometimes even more than that. And be sure to follow my Instagram because uh, it's there, I guess. But anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video.